there is an imbalance between Father's Day and Mother's Day. So that there's this imbalance that may generally well be deserved, but I want to speak up for fathers. Even though Mother's Day gets the bulk of attention and flowers and cards and phone calls, fathers are important. We are caring and nurturing figures in people's lives too. So always when I speak about families, I always want to recognize and celebrate that families do not look exclusively like the Cleavers, though. Single parents, two dads or moms, a parent who passed away or ran away, adoption, fostering, an aunt or uncle filling the role of parent, and those longing to become parents. So all those stories exist just right here within Bethel. It is easy to not see those stories, but I'm honored to be a support along the way for many on those paths. And while today may speak, may, while today may speak to some of these experiences, I want to honor each of these family makeups, whether you are a family of one, or a family of two, or a family of many. A child does not make you a family. A partner does not make you a family. A sense of self, of belonging, of purpose, and legacy are the components of a meaningful family, no matter how many people there are. So fatherhood is easy. I just Googled for some inspirational quotes to quickly dig into the deepest meaning of fatherhood. And there are actually a few truths in this, after all. It is from Women's Day magazine, so it must be deeply true. So here's a few. There is no such, there is no such thing as a perfect parent. So just be a real one. Having a child is like getting a tattoo on your face. You better be committed. <laughs> When your, child, when your children are teenagers, it's important to have a dog so that you have someone in the house who's happy to see you. <laughs> your kids require you most of all to love them for who they are, and not to spend your whole time trying to correct them. Having children is like living in a frat house. Nobody sleeps, everything's broken, and there's a lot of throwing up. There's no way to be a perfect mother or father and a million ways to be a good one. Thank goodness being perfect fell off the menu board long ago, but what I have been embracing more fully are the countless ways of being a good and real parent. Perfect has sailed. Good and real, though, is achievable, and I'd be proud to be called a good dad since perfect dad has not been an option since we walked out of Columbia Presbyterian Hospital in New York City with our oldest child 20 years and eight months ago. I remember when a neighbor checked in on us to ask what we needed from the grocery store. We were only a week or two into this new adventure of parenting and I responded with such desperation with a grocery list of one thing. You see, it was beyond my imagination that despite having two adults to attend to every need of this baby, how in the world would we ever actually get to the grocery store? How could one of us manage the unending biological, emotional, and character formation needs of this two-week-old human being alone? I knew we would eventually run out of food and Rebecca and I, or I would have to venture out for provisions, but it was truly beyond my imagination at that moment at the door. So of all the things we may have needed or wanted, all I could ask for were paper towels. <laughs> Diapers or wipes or even ice cream would have been a respectable answer, but all my brain could come up with was paper towels. 
So as long as we had paper towels, we could hunker down a little bit longer, I guess, or at least until Ben was old enough to order a pizza to be delivered on his own. So I realize that often when I speak on Father's Day, I talk about my father. And certainly my sisters and my mom make fun of me for this. And you know that I love and respect my father deeply. It has been 11 years since he passed away and he is an endless influence of who I am as a person. But I have not often spoken about my experience of being a father. It took something to get my head around this. At Ben's bris, the rabbi turned to me for the baby's name. Binyamin Lev was the name we had selected, each name for one of our grandfathers. Binyamin Lev, Ben, and then I stumbled. Binyamin Lev, Ben Reuven Verifka. No, 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 those were my parents. Reuven and Rivka are my dad and mom. Binyamin Lev Ben, my name was supposed to go there, but my brain could not process that in the moment. I knew I was a parent. That was obvious, but this was something much larger. And I tried again, and I messed up again. I took a breath, and I got it right. Binyamin Lev Ben Heshel Eliezer Verif Kassara. And two years later, Mayan Shira, Bat Harav Heshel Eliezer Verif Kassara. And five more years later, Shoshana Chava, Bat Harav Heshel Eliezer Verif Kassara. There's a blessing for new parents. And I recognize it is in the plural and gender, but it is a blessing which sounds nice with a tiny baby. But we need to repeat it as the children get older, too. We remember, we need to remember our intentions as we get busy with carpools and lunches and play dates and first jobs and relationships and more. Because remember, parenting does not end after they can walk or drive or file their own taxes, or pay for their own vacations. The blessing is still true, even though it is titled in the book, On the Birth or Adoption of a Child. So it goes like this. Source of all life, our hearts are filled with joy for the child that has been entrusted to us. May we be thankful always and speak our thanks, not with words alone, but with the love understanding and tender care with which we hope to raise our child. Be gracious to our child that she may grow in strength of body, mind, and spirit. May she learn to love all that is good and beautiful and true, and so live a life of blessing. May our child find her way in the paths of Torah and good deeds as a loyal member of her people. Give us, O oh God, the wisdom courage and faith that we as parents will need to help our child become strong, confident, and a loving person. Amen. I think that that blessing is not only for an infant, it is the blessing of a parent when their child is of any age. But as my daughter, Mayan Shira Batharav Heshel Eliezer Verifka Sara is about to leave for camp this week, returning at the end of the summer just long enough to pack her things and head to college, this is the last Father's Day together like this. Benjamin Lev is already at college, and so he's not here for these moments. We already have experience with these change dynamics, which are natural and expected. Launching is what it is called. But Benjamin Lev, Mayan Shira, and Shoshana Chava, being your father is the singular hardest thing, best thing, most rewarding thing, growthful thing I could have never imagined. I could never have imagined the ways that you would push me to learn the feelings, <laughs> the feelings of joy that I would feel the frustrations I felt mixed up with intense love, the missteps we each made, which we, which will keep, the missteps we each made, which will keep therapists, yours and mine, employed for years to come. 
and the love we share and the love that we take for granted. For the pride I feel at your accomplishments, which may even be more than I share with you, and you already tell me that I gush too much. Earlier I said, being your father is the single hardest thing, but I have learned it is not singular. You are each your own person, and the tricks learned along the way for one of you rarely is applied correctly to the next one. Being your dad is not a singular thing, but a multiplicity of things for each of you. And there are no instructions. And rarely do you know how to tell me what you need. Thus, we make mistakes. My mom joked with my sisters and I that we should write all of our grievances down in a journal, and when we go to our future therapist, we can hand over the journal and tell the therapist that she did her best, and here are all the ways that she failed. Mom said it might save us a few sessions. It was always a cute joke, but what I have learned is that it's incomplete, because we should also have a second journal. We should also write down all the precious moments, the supportive moments, the loving moments, and hand that journal over too. Each will be true, and somehow they may even inform one another. Believe me, parents could keep the same journal about their kids. So now my kids are 20 and 18 and 13. They're not babies, and I'm learning to adjust to the needs that they have at these stages. Joanne Dodes wrote a book, Parenting, Parenting Jewish Teens, A Guide for the Perplexed. It's a cute title playing off of Rambam's famous 13th century book, A Guide for the Perplexed. And I want to share one section which has been speaking to me lately. She writes, the complex notion of tzimtzum is a fascinating concept in Jewish thought. It refers to the mystical notion that God's presence once filled all creation. God then withdrew or contracted to make room for human freedom and choice. And in this contracting, God made space for independent human endeavors and responsibilities. Dodes continues, this is a fascinating model for parents of Jewish teens. As parents, we need to engage in tzimtzum to pull back in order to provide our teenage children with the space in which they can grow. This is, not a, this is not about abandonment or indifference. Engaging in tzimtzum in this way is about stepping back with love and caring concern to facilitate the transition from childhood to healthy young adulthood. As Rabbi Brad Artson of the University of Judaism now American Jewish University wrote, while casting the giant shadow over our children's perceptions and actions, their maturation entails a retreat of the parents' ability to impose their own preferences. Ultimately, children learn to become responsible for themselves and their own behavior. Can we, as parents, learn to let our children to take charge? Tsim Tsum making space for the person that they are, and making space for the person they are emerging into. The most amazing part of being a father is that it does not happen only on one day. It is the, com is the combined experiences over a long time that determines if you are perfect or good or something else. Benjamin Lev, Mayan Shira, Shoshana Chava, what I have learned is that I will never stop learning from you on how to be a better dad and a better person. That is a gift I could never have fully anticipated when we first brought you home. Eventually, we learned how to get toilet paper, toilet paper towels and toilet paper on our own. And thank goodness for Costco. But as we make this adjustment to a second kid away at college, I know there is so much more to learn for me, as well as the college kids. And Shosh, it will be okay being the only child at home. I will not stare at you at the dinner table. And Ben and Mayan, I'm excited to see your campus experiences too. So it seems to. 
creating space for each of you to emerge and flourish and to be the blessings which we had asked for, source of all life. Be gracious to our child, that she may grow in strength of body and mind and spirit. May she learn to love all that is good and beautiful and true, and so live a life of blessing. Amen. Amen. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat. and happy Father's Day.